Thank you all for being here today. Uh, we are not going to have children's church. I want you to just stay where you are and you're thinking, he's got six minutes. You think I can do it? I do want to share with you a couple of things uh, this morning. And uh, the message as we close out this uh as we close out this month, is that God is love. God is love. And everything that you saw up here was a result that God is love. Amen? Because there was great sacrifices that was made. I mean, these counselors gave up a week of their life for these kids. And these kids uh, were just so, uh, so uh, thankful and so grateful. It was such a great time for them. And I know that that the, not only the kids, but also the counselors will remember this for the rest of their life, especially the decisions that were made and the decisions that were brought out. And, and what a joy that is. And we can't wait for to baptize those that were that were saved. And as a church, we should be rejoicing in that. As a church, we should be excited about that. As a church, we should we should lift that up and say, Lord, thank you so much. For the opportunity that you have uh, that you've given us uh, today, in this last message, I'm going to make it very very short, very uh, because it has to do with this camp. Is that God is love? The first thing that I want to look at is, is uh, when we look at First John uh, chapter four, starting with verse sixteen. And remember, all of my notes that I don't go over anything is at cbcfairs uh, notes or it's on your app also. But we need to define what God's love is, just really fast. I won't keep you long. It says this, and we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us, that God is love. And the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. The first thing that we have to understand really quickly is that God not only loves us, but God is love. Because there are some times that, that love doesn't look like love. And we need to understand that not only does he love us, but his whole characteristic, everything about him, his attributes, everything that he is, he is love. That's who God is. When we look at, at our parents, you may have been raised in a in a household that there was such a, a loving attitude, such a, such a, uh, uh, everybody saying that they love you and they care for you, or you may have been in a household where you didn't have that kind of love or that kind of uh, language being spoken to you. But if you, but, it, but no matter what, there are many times that the parents would do things that looked like love, and there were also times when parents did things that didn't look like love. Do you remember the, the statement that used to be made is that this is going to hurt you more than it is me? You remember that? When you were, it's going to hurt you, me. Well, obviously, I never heard that statement before. That, that you know, we, we've gone from, from the attitude of, of uh, discipline to where now we see that there's not a lot of discipline in our society today. But God still loves us no matter where we are. God still cares about us no matter what we're going through. God still loves us. But here's the thing, that if we don't remember and understand that God is love, then there's going to be some times when we're in a situation when we just don't feel that anybody, even God, could love us. But there is no, there is no question that God loves us because he is love. He cannot do anything else but love us. And now, as we are growing up and as we are dealing with teenagers and, and adult children and people within our life, that sometimes we struggle with that definition that I'm going to be able to love because God's in my life. I'm going to be able to love someone unconditionally, not, not motivated by a particular love, not focused in on that, that if you treat me right, I'll treat you right but it is that I'm going to love you unconditionally. And that is defining God's love. Because you may have gone down the wrong road. You may be doing the wrong things in life. You may be making the wrong choices. 
You have, have sin within your life that is unconfessed. And guess what? God still loves you, and he loves me. Isn't that the wonderful thing to know? <coughs> that even though we are, we are sinners, we're saved by grace, but yet even before that we accepted Christ as our Savior, God still loved us. God still loved us. Now, a lot of times people use that as an excuse not to do the things that we need to do for the Lord. But God also loves us to where he's going to discipline us if it's necessary. So sometimes, just like with the parent, that love of God doesn't look like love, but yet it really is. He's going to discipline us out of love. Here's the second thing that I want us to remember is that we need to comprehend God's love. We need to comprehend God's love. Ephesians 3, 18 and 19, it says this, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length, the width, the height, and the depth of God's love. And to know Christ's love that surpasses knowledge so that, that you may be filled with all of the fullness of God. That we need to know how deep it is. We need to know how wide it is. We need to know the length of it. We need to know the height of it. That we need to comprehend God's love is so unconditional that he's going to love sinners just like me. That he's going to accept us into the family of God. That he's going to that's going to wrap his arms around us, so to speak, even though that we've made some wrong decisions. And church, let me tell you, that needs to be the picture of the church. That needs to be what we do. That needs to be what we focus on. And as, 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 as Christ followers, we need to love. You remember what the disciples asked Jesus when he said, how will they possibly know us? How will they know us when, when we, uh, we have served, we, we have so many things around us that people are serving? How will they know we're disciples of yours and Jesus said they will know you because of your love they will know you because of your love and isn't it wonderful to know that we can pass that down to generation to generation pass that down to Layla here on the front row to Daniel there on the back row to James wherever James is I think he's in the nursery and uh, and we're, that we can pass that's that's the smallest of our church but then our children, and then our youth, and then those who never received Christ before. That, that God's love, that we can comprehend God's love to the point that we can pass that down. And not only pass it down through words, but pass that down through action. Pass that down for, for what I do and what, I, what they see me do is reaching out to those that are in love. But what if, Someone comes into the church that just looks unlovable. But God still loves them, and we need to still love them. You see, it's not our choice to be able to pick and choose who comes into the church. They're a good visitor. They're a bad visitor. They don't think they, well, you know, It's not up to us. Uh, what's up to us is that we, we need to love everyone that God puts into our life. Does it mean that we have to accept the sin that they're in? Does it mean that we have to agree with what they're going through? But we do need to love them just as Christ loved us. Does that make sense? Here's the third thing, real quick. Is that we need to complete in God's love that we need to understand that when we accept Christ as our Savior, turn up verse 17 for me, would you? In this, love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world, that we have the confidence to be able to pass it on, that when, you, when I tell somebody about Jesus, that on that very day, the last breath that they take, the last time that Jesus said the trumpet sounds, if he comes back before we die, that I am confident in knowing that I'm going to be in his very presence, and that what I am teaching and what I am sharing is the very thing that's going to get you to that same place, going to be in the very presence of the Lord. That there is a confidence about us that we, we need to spread and we need to share. 
that this is life-changing. God's love is life-changing. There are so many people that feel unloved. There's so many people that are in our lives and that are around us that just feel so alone, even though that they're in the midst of people around them. But they need to experience God's love. And how are they going to do that? They do that through our actions. We are the feet. We are the voice. We are what they see. And, and even though we fail, even though we fall short, God wants to use every single one of us to witness and to testify and to really strong, to, to tell people about what Jesus can do within our life. I've already gone over. And that was a short version. If you need more, uh, just go to the notes. I have other things that I was going to say, but I want to I wanna stop there. But I thank you so much for, for a, being a part of these kids going to camp. Financially, praying for those of you. I know there's many here that's not here today that they got the bracelet last week. Uh, but I know that there were every one of our counselors, every one of our kids were being prayed for daily by those who had the wristband on. Thank you so much for that. Pray for our church and uh, pray for each other and lift up each other that we can continue to show people around us God's love. And thank you so much for participating. It means so much to these kids and so much to the youth when we come back from camp to give them the opportunity to be able to come and to be able to share or not share, but they have the opportunity to do it. And I thank those who came, came, came up and was a part of that. I hope to see you next week and uh, hope to be a part of what, <clears throat> what God is uh, uh, doing within our church and within our life. And, uh, and I just want to, I just want to give a couple announcements before we go. Uh, Give. Uh, we have our giving boxes in the very back if you'd like to uh, uh, give to the ministry here. Also, directly after this service, it's going to be about probably uh, 1145. We're going to have a quick uh, quarterly business meeting. I hope that you can stay and be a part of that. We have some discussions and, and give our financial report, and that's open to anybody who wants to stay for that. And also, this Wednesday night, we're going to restart our studies on Wednesday night, activity for the youth, activity for the children, and also activities for the adults. And we'll be in, in a Bible study during that time. So come 6.30 this Wednesday night. Anything else before we close out? Let's all stand together. Close us out in a, in a prayer, and uh, I'll meet everybody out back. God, we thank you so much for today. We thank you that... Um we get to sit together as a church family, God, and just...